What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Last time, we made our way through a whole bunch of military-type Brahe fellows on this side of the battlefield, and it appears that we have reached a point where there are more, like, futuristic fellows. So, whoa. An entire phalanx of Brahe's. And yet, despite there being six of them, they don't seem to have all that much more health than a Brahe private. But at least if the, all six of them are grouped together, that means I can interrupt them all pretty easily. Um, so I don't think positive thinking will be quite as pertinent. I feel like I should maybe focus a little bit more on single target here, since there's only three enemies. So that's what I'm going to do. Despite there being six of them, they do only, I want to say, about 50% more damage than when there's than a single Brahe private. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any way for me to interrupt any of them. So, let's get poison up on the lieutenant here. And... Let's just dance crazy around that guy. Seems like it would be overkill on the bottom guy. Burry should be able to finish him off. Uh, let's triple tap the lieutenant again. They did. Can I triple tap him again? I mean, I could. It doesn't seem like it would actually do anything, though. Expound! Over 1,000 damage! Well, Dance Crazier should finish him off. And so. Level 20? Oh man! So I guess these guys are also like window decoration, the same as these guys. The heck? That's like a zombie brahe. Can I not go behind this one? Like all the other ones that I can go behind? That's kind of weird. This guy's this way is leading back down, so. I guess that's all there is down here. So, time to take on the zombie, zombie brahe. Ah, the zombrahe. Or no, that's the brahoot. Um, seems like interrupting him is a thing that I should probably do. I guess I'll focus my single target attacks on him while I charge up for a little bit of AoE here. Da -da. I'm not going to be able to interrupt him this time, so I did not mean to use Wind Missile. I was trying to go up to the Brodent abilities so that I could get poison on him. But that does not seem to have worked out. I kind of missed the mark. I really wish Focus Hug healed everyone. This would be a good opportunity for an AoE heal. Uh, actually, this time I actually can interrupt him, so let's do that. Only the big guy remains. I mean, I guess I might as well get Poison up. He's almost dead at this point. Like, the battle's almost over. But I guess it'll probably help a little bit. Dance Crazier! Huh. 
punchy punch. And I do not have enough MP for Ice Shards, so let's use Barry. I think it's safe to say this guy is dead. Goodbye. Coral Golem is now level 20. Onward for great justice. That's a lot of exploded stuff. Hmm, there's a whole area over there. Seems like... It looked like there was another entrance. I wonder. Can I go up from here somewhere? Um, I guess maybe I'm mistaken and I have to go around from the top? Oh yeah, okay, it doesn't look like you can actually even access that chest from the bottom, so I guess I was mistaken. General Brahe. Whenever a zombie is killed, they take damage. So... I guess maybe I should focus on taking him out before worrying about the Zombrahes. Interrupt him. Get up positive thinking, and... He doesn't have any kind of like... I don't know why, but I feel like Twisp should have some form of like... Defense reducing attack. But it doesn't seem to have one of such. I could use Call Skeleton, but with all these enemies, I feel like it wouldn't be especially useful. So instead, I will use Ice Shards. Actually, this would be a good battle to have a tank for. Assuming that said tank would actually have the ability to draw attacks to himself, I guess. Without that, you're basically just hoping for a 1 in 4 chance that the tank actually is the one that gets hit, which is not especially effective. Whatever the case, I don't think 10,000 HP is super high at this point. I mean, Gabe's team could take out 10,000 10, HP in like a couple turns with a little bit of setup, but I think even for these guys I can manage it too without too much trouble. Once I get Dance Crazy going. These zombies do hurt though. Uh, I guess I should put the Brodent on healing duty. Damn. Burry does a pretty good amount of damage, so I will attack with him. Try and make sure the Philosophy stays alive here. Considering it is the primary source of my damage. I was healed by the power of positive thinking. Actually, I wish I could take that top hat decap back. Because I'm going to want to start AoEing soon. Oh well. What are you going to do? I guess with... Oh wow. 2600 damage? I wasn't expecting it to do that much. Okay. Healing time! So, the positive thinking is going to heal Brodent, so let's heal Catsby. Oh, it healed Twist? That's kind of weird, but okay, whatever. Why is 
keep missing some HP. I don't think I attacked him at all. Boom. Whatever. Uh, focus hug and potion on Philosophy. Now, I'm assuming that the damage that I take from killing these zombies is not going to be sufficient to... Not... Sufficient's the wrong word. I'm assuming it doesn't have the ability to kill me. Hoping, at least. Or the last time that damage is applied just... Or would be applied, it just isn't. So, Swordmaster, less positive thinking with two exp extra exclamation marks. Anti antidote? Okay. In the zone. Yorf. I mean, I don't see why that dis uh, th that would be any more effective than your average dismemberment. I mean, it's not terrible. So Tycho is just in my party, and he's Scholar? Omnibus and Talisman. So I can't change his equipment, unfortunately, but these things happen. Okay, uh, I was right. I've got a whole bunch of abilities to look at now. I don't think Twist learned anything. Actually, no, he did. He learned Swordmaster, but he uses axes, so not really a thing. Anti antidote. Oh, that's interesting. You didn't learn anything because you're terrible. And he learned in the zone? Temporary magic boosts ever use using a 2 ampere higher ability. Interesting. Very interesting. Can I get up here? I don't think I can. So I guess that means there's nothing over there. But anyways, there should be a way to go down here to grab this other chest over here. Six thousand dollars! We're up to thirty-one thousand at the moment. Intern, huh? Blizzard! I feel as though Tycho's presence will make things not necessarily easier, because I'm also kind of assuming that enemies will be balanced around the fact that Tycho is present. But still. Are these guys really attacking by throwing coffee at me? I mean... I get that coffee falls under the realm of the intern, but still. And that's just a giant black shadow. Retcon? Okay then. Uh, open up the Blizzard and Eternal Punishment, and I'll focus on killing those guys, and he can use Blizzard. It's, it's kind of cool attack animation there. A little like black lightning kind of thing. 
That coffee does a surprising amount of damage. It does more than six Brahe privates shooting me at once, apparently. How much do these actually have left? Okay. It's not bad damage. Gonna focus on taking one of them out now, though. Yeah. Ironically, I'm pretty sure Dance Crazier does more damage than Ice Shardier. But Philosophy kind of died, so I guess I can't really prove that. Obscure, huh? And Moira learned cunning. Hmm, okay. Cunning. Begin combat with 1 MP. That's cool. So that's for the Brodent. Him. I guess Twist Paz Moira as well. That's handy. That's, that's the kind of ability that you can probably use in a pinch. Like, if I find an especially hard fight, I'd probably be worth switching someone to Moira just for the single fight, just to get that boost from first turn. Hmm, okay. So it gives automatically gives your attacks a holy element. So this seems like it's probably a boss of some description. So if that's the case, then let us How shall I do this? I guess put Catsby off the line for now. Oh, this isn't a boss. It, he just looks badass. Uh, so I guess I should do what I'm here to do and poison him. Other than that, just do a little bit of AoE damage. Twisp can flip out on the first turn now, thanks to Moira's new ability. It's kind of odd that they would give that to a speed type, though, when obviously a magic type could make a lot more use of it. Uh, just focus on taking this guy down at this point. You can't have much longer to live. Starburn is actually doing a decent amount of damage. It's kind of funny how like we're actually caught up to Tycho pretty good in terms of power at this point. Go around back here. Seven thousand dollars. They're like showering us with money with all these chests. Not that I'm likely to complain about that, but it's interesting anyways. So I guess we could just dodge that guy if we wanted to, but actually these paths are not technically connected. So let us go back. A brood axe? Oh right, I remember these things. I guess AoE is a good thing? Oh, I was gonna... Being as that's the case, I was going to switch the Brodent out for Catsby, but... I always kind of forget that I actually have that ability. I just kind of instinctively go right into the battle. It's kind of a, a bad habit to have, honestly. These guys have a fair amount of health. I think 
and I'm going to try and get poison up on all of them. Soul Eater seems like it would work. Uh, revelations. And maybe just heal the Philosophy for now. Brodent is hurting! No, you kill Brodent, mean face! I... Yeah, mean face. That's... That's what I'll call him. That'll really get him thinking. Top hat decap. One down. Poison up on this last guy here. If he survives... Do I have an AoE heal? I do. But I don't think it works on the dead. That's unfortunate. Get Twist back up then. Is it worth switching him out at this point? I kind of feel like it's not. Ah, Tycho has a lot of MP left. Why does he have so much MP? Am I missing something here? Does he have like a passive that I don't know about? I mean, considering I can't actually look at his abilities, it wouldn't be that surprising. I guess I'll just kill this guy. So, this should finish the both of them off. Down they go. Oh. So now I have a brood axe, okay. So let's see what he's got. Uh is he another armor type? Interesting. Human suit. Scarpus. Power base, I'm using current HP. Defense and magic up. Automatically revise after a while. So he could be handy. It's just unfortunate that none of these defense types seem other than the toad guy, I guess, from the other team, really seem to have a taunt of any description to like force the bad guys to attack him. And considering all of his stuff that focuses on HP, he actually doesn't seem to have all that much of it. Well, I guess 330 is okay for this level. He's level 22. I don't know, he might be worth exploring once I... If I were to give him... I might actually have already an HP boosting accessory that I don't have, or no, don't use. Eh, it might be worth experimenting with. For now, I'm gonna try and take these guys out real quick. Quick as I can, anyways. Unfortunately, three enemies is like... It's kind of an annoying number to face, because it's like the exactly... It's like right on the threshold of where it's good to use AoE and where it's better to use single target damage. Because, like, four enemies, that's like a no-brainer. If there's four enemies, you just uh, AoE. If there's two enemies, then it's a little bit... It's probably better to just focus on single target damage. But three enemies? It's like, what do you do? I, I guess you have to kind of take it situation by situation, but... Yeah. Like, I guess... If there's three enemies, then you're probably going to do more damage if you're AoEing. Wow, that hurt. A lot. But at the same time, if there's three enemies, then there, there's a good chance, like if the battle starts with that many, there's a good chance that they are sufficiently strong to the point where you probably want to focus on reducing their numbers. Wow. The compounding poison effect from that passive the anti-antidote I think it's called it's actually really strong 
the amount of poison damage this thing is doing after a couple turns is going up, like, ridiculously. I'm pretty sure one of them took, like, 600 damage from a poison tick. The one that I killed. Either that, or I'm just seeing things. But either way, I mean, the, just the nature of poison means that it's pretty cool that if uh, the ticks are getting gradually stronger. I mean, 300 is definitely stronger than 250. You know, in reality, it probably doesn't amount to all that much extra damage. It just seems... It's very satisfying seeing large amounts of damage over time ticks. I accidentally cast Blizzard instead of Ice Shard. Oh well. I guess it killed him anyways. Waves of healing, huh? Huh. Interesting. So he has an AoE heal over time just by being present. Okay, so I'm assuming that reduces uh, all incoming damage, but uh, applies like a damage over time to you. Anyways, this episode has gone on long enough, so we shall continue our way through this battlefield on the next episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Catch you later!